Hey, in a moment, I'm going to show you a video of this fantastic energizer or brain break that's called 1234. And if you're looking for something that is no props, uh, that can be used with lots of small groups, groups of two, three, or four people, it's simple and it's fast paced and energetic, then you and your group are going to love it. But before we play the video, I want you to notice two things. First of all, notice something about the demonstration of the activity. There's something really powerful that I do that I think you should take note of. And also, I want you to look for something that I could have done that would have improved the engagement with this exercise. I wouldn't call it an error as such, but something, a strategy that I could have used that I'll reveal at the end of the video that I think just would have ramped up the energy in this activity. Anyway, for now, let's hit the play button on one, two, three, four. Okay, great. In this exercise, in whether it's twos or threes, and when Nate's ready, he can come and join you guys, is that uh, it's called one, two, three, four, and that just simply means you're going to clench your feast in the middle of your group and bounce it up and down four times. So it'll look like one, two, three, four. But on four, is that you need to extend a certain number of fingers on your hand. So for example, it might look like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So anything from one to five, so not zero, just anything one to five. Your object in your group, randomly and without pattern, is to make a sum of seven. But the kicker is that you might have just seen everyone else do like three and a three and you go, oh man, I'll do a one next time and they do the same threes. Each time you throw out a number of fingers, it needs to be different. So you can't talk. However, each time you extend a certain number of fingers, it'll be a different number each time. Okay? So as a quick example, you, you, we can make it a group of three here. So it's on one, it's on four, so you're bouncing together. Are you ready? Go. One, two, three, four. Okay, and you've got six. Okay, one. Five, great. Could call out the numbers as you say. Really gets you into the, yeah. Okay, you got the idea. Give it a go. Okay, Okay. Oh, we gotta make seven. Oh, okay. One, two, three. Got it. Seven. Okay. Got it. Six. Right. So we're doing seven. Seven. That's like the natural flow. That's why it's a different game. No, we don't make it. So we have, if we don't make seven. You just, just keep going. Keep going. You just keep going until you get seven. Oh, you got your first try. All right, then your object is how many times you get them in 30 seconds. Oh, you're right, you're right. All three of us making seven all together is that the. All three summed together. Hey, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that. And I wonder what sorts of notes you might have made. I said I would come back with a couple of strategies. First of all, what did you notice about the demonstration? Note that I was using the group to demonstrate. Yes, I could have pulled in a couple of my colleagues and demonstrated the activity. However, there's some real power in actually using a real group. First of all, it demonstrates to everybody else that it's possible. Because if I use my colleagues, we all assume that we know what we're doing. But I can also use that demonstration to clarify things. So I didn't just simply give the instructions and step back. I actually did a demonstration with a real group to actually make that far more powerful. And here's the other thing, not so much an error, but did you notice that even in that short period of time where you're watching the groups actually play the game, that a couple of groups got to seven really quickly? And what did you notice then? They quickly disengaged. You could tell that about the way they held their bodies. So what I would do next time, and what I do from now on, is that I encourage them to get to that number as many times as they can in 30 seconds or 60 seconds. I, I engage them with some level of competition. So here's another thought. Maybe you could use flip chart or whiteboard or list the numbers some way and their object is that every time they get to the number, they move to the next number on the list. And the competition, the challenge is to get through as many of those numbers that, as they can within that time period that you allocate. Here's a couple of other things. One, there's no magic in the number. Um, but I often use odd numbers because it's a lot more difficult to work out uh, from a small group perspective, what number they might want to give. So for example, if the number is eight and there's only two of them, they might quickly work out. They just do two groups of four. Uh, so using an odd number can be very useful, but it, there's no magic there. 
And here's the other thing too that I've noticed. If you play with young people, um, more often than not, they'll use a hand to count with. So when you put out a hand, you might need to frame it as just use, keep that hand out there, but use your other hand to count the fingers if in fact that's a strategy that they use. If you happen to notice anything else, drop it into the comments down below. Otherwise, I hope you have fun with it as well. Thank you so much for watching.